Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is the first video you're watching, then I really suggest you go back and watch the previous videos to get an understanding of what's going on here. My name is Maria and I help students prepare for the Ruby entrance exam with a big emphasis on the math part and also tutor for IELTS. You can also check out my work in Instagram with all the links below for more details about the VU program, the entrance exam and what I do. So, all introductions aside, let's talk about how to maximize your chances of getting accepted into WU BBE. This video is really important for applicants, who, for people who are going to apply to WU BBE, so you should invest your time into watching this video. First of all, I would like to tell you that there is no such thing as a bare minimum or pass fail in this exam. It's just depends on you and your place relative to your competition, so to other people who took the exam. Because how they rank and how they decide to accept you or not is you take the entrance exam, which is in July, in the beginning of it, and in 2021, around 2,068 people applied, this is all official information, and only 240 people get, 240 people get accepted. So you take the exam and then they rank, you, rank all the students from best to worst, and they pick out the top 240 people and send them the admission offer. So your motivation statement, your CV, your IELTS or TOEFL or other English proficiency test scores, your high school grades, your high school living exam grades, your GPA and so on, do not play a role in your acceptance. They don't play a role. They're not like decisive factors in are accepted or not. So you think you should spend a lot of time on your IELTS or your TOEFL preparation to get the highest score possible you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so if you have the B2 level of English, that's enough. So as, you, as long as you have the formal, the minimum they require, you're fine. The motivation statement, it's, if you combine all the three questions they have, it's about a page long. And if you're thinking you have, it has to be absolutely perfect, it does not. You don't have to hire 10 people to, for example, check it for you. It's just a formality for people to get the invitation to the exam. So it just, they just check, are you responsible enough to meet the deadline, to submit a good piece of writing and answer the questions in a nice way, in good English, good grammar, vocabulary and so on, to basically let you into the exam. So, so to see who actually cares enough to do that step and get the invitation to the exam. Because maybe some people might apply for fun, I don't know who does it, but I know it's really easy to apply there, so they kind of have to make this filter in a way. So the most important step, as you already understood, is the entrance exam and is the biggest decisive factor for your future and the answer yes or no from the university, do they offer you a spot or not. That is why you should prepare a lot, you should dedicate a lot of time for it and prepare for it really nicely. A good education background, a good level of English, good grades in math and economics, or if you finished uh, one year of university somewhere else, will make it easier for you to prepare, will kind of help you navigate easier and so on, but they're not the decisive factors and they're not and they're not the only thing which will make you successful on the exam. Because on my personal example, I spent my secondary school, I went to secondary school in the British College and I got all A's in maths. I was student, student, uh, teacher's favorite. I got an A on my high school living exam in math, which was like proficient math. So as you can see, I had a C1 level of English. I had a pretty good background. And on the exam, after preparing for half a year for it, and even more, I think, I sat there and I thought to myself, why didn't I study more? So I regretted not studying enough, not more. I mean, I studied a lot, but I was like, I should have studied more. I should have read the book one more time. I should have uh, solved more math tasks and so on. So if you think, a lot of people ask me, when should I start preparing for it? A month before it? Three months before it? As soon as you have the possibility to do that, because you're going to have like a snowball of events and other things you have to do by summer. And if you start preparing in advance and you time it out in a nice way, you'll be less stressed and you will be more confident on the exam. It's like a roller coaster when you, for example, do some practice uh, tests and uh, you see the exam, it's like you rode the roller coaster for the 10th time. And imagine people who didn't do much and they decided to just go on the exam and trust their life, their destiny, and they see that for the first time and it's like riding a scary roller coaster for the first time. So emotions and stress levels are going to be completely different. Now, 
So for example, theory, getting all the theory you need and all the practice you need is really important. And you can also check out my Wubi Benchmark Exam Preparation course, which focuses exactly on that, and especially on the math part, because a lot of students struggle with it. And the link will be down below in the description box. And, but what other factors influence are you in or not? What other things, sometimes even more important than your knowledge, could possibly go wrong? They are divided into two main parts, psychological factors and technical factors. A brief note here is that in 2018-2019, the exam was offline in Vienna, so the only danger you had is not showing up to Vienna or being sick, like physical reasons. You just physically couldn't be on the, in the exam room. And during the online exam, which was in 2020 and 2021, uh, had a lot of more other surprises, which you could see there on the exam day. And VU didn't announce yet what, how the exam is going to be in 2022. You should check out their website for that, for any updates. But there is a kind of a rumor, some people say that they prefer the online format and they would like to maybe keep it irrespective of what happens with the COVID and stuff. So kind of let's be prepared for that. And on the online exam, this is all based on real stories. This is not something I made up. I had been in contact with over 100 students who took the exam in 2021, and this is and also some students who took the exam in 2020. So this information is all based on students' stories. This is not something I made up. So the technical reasons. Technical reasons which depend on you. So your electricity still goes off and don't have a, an extra power supply. You didn't pay for your Wi-Fi and it ended and you cannot continue the exam. Your web camera is not working and you didn't check your emails, you didn't set up your verification, you didn't post a verification photo to them. Because what happened to one student is he took the exam and they texted him right after that, could you please submit your verification photo like with your ID next to you so we can like see it's you who took the exam again because something happened to it, maybe it was blurry and so on. And he decided he didn't reply, maybe he was on vacation and after two days of not getting a reply from, from him, who just disqualified him. And another really kind of unfortunate story is a student's web camera wasn't working for a period of time, not for the whole exam, but for a period of time. They couldn't see him and they couldn't check if he's cheating or not and they also disqualified him for that reason. So please check your emails, do the mock tests. If it's online, they provide you like two mock tests, test out the platform, make sure you have all the packages needed, for example, installed. So check the instructions and the technical side of it really well. Go to maybe to a cafe or to a library to make sure you have electricity and Wi-Fi. Please take care of the technical reasons which depend on you, so which you can influence and which you can make sure they go more or less smoothly. Other technical reasons are unfortunately more about the platform. So some students couldn't log into the exam, they just couldn't log in. Like on the mock tests it worked, but on the exam day they just couldn't see the exam and unfortunately couldn't take it, couldn't participate in the selection procedure. Some students logged in and the submit button either presses itself automatically or she presses itself accidentally somewhere, like the submit button where, which you press at the end of the test, not after each question, just at the end. And it submitted like one minute after she opened it. And of course, well, she couldn't do anything about it at the time. And yeah, so make sure, be very careful, but sometimes the circumstances are out of your control. And in this case, so where it's the platform and your computer, it's an issue between them. Vue technical support staff cannot really do much because they, they don't have your computer or like they cannot be responsible for every student and like all their technical difficulties and for individual difficulties. And they usually cannot help that much, unfortunately. And there are other technical difficulties which happen to everyone. So if you sit there and you think it's, you're the only person who has this, for example, you cannot see a question or you don't see the text, or like maybe it went out blurry, anything. It's usually you can see something. It might be a problem not only you have, but everybody else taking an exam has. So everyone is in the same, in the same boat. For these cases, please print out their contacts and have a charged phone so you can immediately contact them, call them, email them and then just skip that part. Go to the next question, go to the next part, like don't let it paralyze you. Because in 2021, there, the text for some reason didn't show up for the English part, for the English questions, and students well, couldn't solve the English text related questions because there was no text. Some students guessed the answer, some students spent time trying to make it common sense. Some students closed the exam in immediately because they just got paralyzed by stress and by that situation they thought it was only them and it turns out everybody has the same problem and in the end that 
that section of the exam wasn't even counted, so that it wasn't a score of 100 points, it was a score of 87 points because they excluded that part. So people who had the courage to overcome it and to just skip it and not let it affect their mood and their kind of, uh, they were like together, they, uh, they were very kind of, no, stress uh, repellent and they just skipped over and they had higher chances and they got more scores, more points compared to the people who spent and invested a lot of time into the part, which was in the end just not counted at all. So if you see something like this, just skip it. Go, go over it, they will probably email you or send you a message in the platform that okay, this is a problem everyone has, please come back to it later, please ignore it and so on, they will let you know. So don't let such things paralyze you. And a little knowledge factor which can go wrong is that every single person will have one or two or three or more questions which they cannot solve. It's just too difficult for them. Maybe it requires too much time and you don't, you're not used to drawing it on the screen, like you cannot draw the calculations and the notes on the screen because this is what you do on the online exam. And if you see such a question, you see, okay, it's really difficult, skip, skip, skip it. it nothing will happen because as you can see, more or less the entrance point it's hard to call it like it, but still, it's around 80%. So even people who got in got 20 or 15% wrong. It's fine to make a mistake, it's fine to skip a question. In that case, just guess it, guess the answers because you don't have negative points. It's, they use the partial credit system for that. It's either zero if you got it all wrong and you get some partial points if you got half of it correct. For example, if there are five question, five points for one question, and you go to like, let's say, half of it wrong, half of it correct, you get 2.5 points. So there's nothing to lose, so you just get it and just move on. Because if you waste your time on that and you kind of, you solved half of the test and then you come to it and you see a big mountain, which is a difficult question, and you don't go around it and you try to climb it and kind of maybe destroy it, you will lose a lot of time and you won't gain the other points, which you could have easily gained if you just ignored it, guessed it, and skipped it. So please keep it in mind, so work on your strategy. If you see a question you cannot solve, skip it, maybe write it out that you skip question number this and come back to it later if you have the time. And then you maybe try to make a more precise guess, maybe do some calculations and so on. And don't forget about the time pressure because no matter how many hours you have, in from 2018 until 2020, it was three hours for three parts, math, English, economics. And each part has around 10 to 13 questions and each question has five multiple choice statements, which you have to pick which are right, which are wrong. And you had three hours, and then in 2021, it was the third year this happened, you had only just two hours. Irrespective of the time everybody in the previous years, in 2021, had the time pressure. So please try to train yourself, how do you behave under the time pressure, and how do you get the maximum points possible? So skipping the questions you can solve, ignoring maybe some technical obstacles on the way, and kind of pulling yourself together at this point because out of those two or three hours, your maybe future three years in your academic career might depend on those other hours. So yeah, you have to really be together in that day. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go to the website with the preparation course, to my Instagram, you can contact me there also. I respond pretty quickly. If you have any additional questions, all the details will be in the description box. See you.